Okay, so I'm um, currently getting ready for a solo show in Berlin at Goff and Rosenthal, which is a gallery uh, that has a gallery in New York, and they also have one in Berlin. They came in last week and did a studio visit and saw the armor, and uh, about an hour after they left, called me and said they had a free slot in Berlin, and it was uh, up to the challenge, and... The challenge being that the work's going to ship out in like three weeks and a lot of the, the armor isn't finished, this painting isn't finished, um, I'm doing another guitar that's not finished so I have a lot of work to do and I'm still working full time so it's kind of stressful but it's a good kind of stress. One just you know I've been, work, I've been working so much for other people it's great to have um, have a, have an opportunity to work for yourself and work towards a goal so that's that's very cool and uh, I'm excited to go back to Berlin this will be t two times I've been to Berlin twice in, in six months which is amazing and then also I get to show this piece that I've been working on for about eight months and get people's reactions to it so I'm really excited about that well the other the other really cool thing is this is the first art show like when I had the show in San Francisco I had to pay to go out there. It was just a group show, and uh, they did ship the work. I didn't have to pay for that, but this will be my first show where they're, they're flying me out and paying for my living expenses and stuff, so. That is a major victory. That's something I've been dreaming about for art to, you know, take you places. And the antagonist movement took us places, but we had to pay for it, so. Uh, this painting is entitled Hellas, which I think is going to be the name of the show in Berlin. And um, one day I was walking down the street and there was this average looking guy, you know, somebody who <coughs> probably likes the Yankees or something. Just, it just didn't, I heard this bizarre conversation he had on his cell phone where I walked by and I heard, baby, all empires must fall, all empires must fall. And, uh, you know, after the debacle in Iraq, I've been hearing that phrase a lot, so I wanted to investigate what the etymology of it, or more, I mean, more like where it came from. So I did a little searching, and I found this romantic poem by this guy Percy Shelley from, like, uh, the 18th century. And the poem's called Hellas. And in the poem, this advisor to a king is talking about you know, all empires eventually fall. I guess the name Hellas is Greek or Latin for um, Greece. And the poem is sort of an elegy to Greece, but more importantly, it's more of like a, I don't know, a warning that history is doomed to repeat itself in a weird way if people aren't aware of the past. So um, I sort of feel like my... Uh, nostalgia or sentimentality towards records, which I obviously have a lot of, is um, in a weird way a metaphor for for you know this dying medium of records, which is basically a dead medium. I mean, I know they still make records, but on a mass scale, nobody buys them. To me, is a metaphor for this sort of nostalgia I have for the America of my youth. Which even though which which is a which is a flawed nostalgia because that was during the Reagan era one of the you know more horrible parts periods in in America but it's this nostalgia for this idea of America I guess so that's what this painting it's some old boxes of records and in a way my show is about that not necessarily not necessarily in a political way but it's an elegy for my youth, but also an attempt for me to not repeat my past by investigating my past through artwork. So in a way, I'm doing what the counselor to this king in this poem is, is doing, is, he, is like investigating the past and trying to learn from it instead of just repeating it constantly, over and over again. Found this guitar in the trash. It's a perfect studio guitar, though. I'm gonna get like a. 
armor all and shine this shit up so it's just like. Doesn't it look kind of uh, silvery? The highlights? I did this last night at 1.30 in the morning, a little after a few beers. It's hard to get them so they don't break when you push the eyes in. Which I don't really care about. It makes it almost look more like a skull. But I think for this red one, I wanted it to be perfect. Yeah, so I guess I guess an issue, which, is for, which uh, you know, I've been talking to some galleries in Berlin, but they're always, uh, and it was, it was our problem with the, the antagonist movement is, is uh, the cost of shipping work over. This gallery, Goffin Rosenthal, is going to just build a giant crate, have a crate made. Uh, I think pretty much like a life-size human crate. And we're gonna try, I'm going to try and leave as much of the armor on this guy as I can. And we'll just wrap it in uh, microfoam and bubble. And then uh, pack the skulls up and we'll just have this giant crate. And like a, a freighting company will come pick it up here and um, fly it over. And it takes about two to three weeks to have stuff shipped over.